When it was important, like bands like Metallica, when they needed a new bass player, right. guess who they called? Yeah. They called John. Yeah, that's right. That's how Flotsam and Jetsam was the first band that got signed after I'd been there that I actually really liked. Mm. I thought the record was Doomsday amazing. The Deceiver, right? I thought the record was amazing. I thought the band right could play. I thought they had a shot. And I, all I saw was Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, Anthrax, and Flotsam and Jetsam could come in there and go up and join that group. And, you know, and, right. and when they got up to 150,000 records, I mean, they were, that was Slayer territory for us. Yeah. And they were starting to really sell records. And then, well, well, Brian was gone. He was doing something else. And I was the only other guy at the label that Lars felt comfortable talking to. And I talked to, to him a few times and knew him. He knew who I was. And he, called up, he called up one day, and Brian wasn't there, and so he asked to talk to me. And so the first thing he said was, well, we need a bass player. And I go, sad but true. And, I said, and he says, well, what do you think? I says, well, you know, I know all the, the local guys. Because I was one of the guys when people, you know, when somebody would quit a band or they need something, the first call was obviously Mike Varney. Right, and, right. and there was two or three guys that knew the players and knew the people and knew how good they were and could tell how good they were and, and knew their personalities. And it was always the same three or four guys. And I was in that loop. Mm. You know, I was in that loop. I got Mitch Perry and Talos. I, I put Reverend together. I, I got Mike Howe to, to, to Metal Church. I, yeah. I knew all these people, you know. So anyway, so, so Lars asked to talk to me, and I mentioned Jason. I said, Jason Newstead, he had heard of Flotsam, but he hadn't heard of Jason. Right. And he says, yeah, I've heard about Flotsam. And I said, well, they're really good. I mean, they're kind of a clone to you guys in a lot of ways. But Jason's really got his stuff together. He writes his songs. He books everything. He does all the interviews. He's really hard working. He's a straight kid. He doesn't have any drug issues or any crazy crap like that. And, and he just, he challenges me. He, he really pushes me hard. And, and I dig his work ethic, and I think he's a hard-nosed kid. Mm. And I think he's going to make it whether there's not. But I think you should give him a shot. And so that was weird because that night was the first night that Flotsam and Jetsam was ever going to play L.A. Mm. And, uh, and so... You know, the guys in the office, Flotsam had been in and out of the office all day long, and they heard Lars's name brought up, that Lars called, and they kind of put it together that maybe he called about Jason. Because it was obvious he was the guy in that band. Right, right. That yeah, he was the only sure. guy that was really ready to go to a better, better band, and they wanted to hang on to him. And uh, so Jason came into my office, and I turned the music up really loud, and I said, Lars called today, and I gave him your phone number. And he may call you, he may not. But you can, you can get this gig if you want it. You're good enough. I know, those, I know those people well enough to know that you would fit in their personalities. So I, you know, it's your call. I mean, I think Flossum can exist with you or without you. Right. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see you do both, you know, you do Flossum and if it works out. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't have that big of an opinion right now. So I told him that, and he got white as a ghost. Hmm. And then, we, then Brian came in, and I, and, and I said, hey, Brian, Lars called, and he's looking for bass players. He goes, send him everything. <laughs> Send him every cassette, every he just wanted anybody to be in Metallica, so he'd have one of his guys in Metallica, and we all thought that would give us a, a favor from Metallica, like you know maybe a Heretic would open up for him on the national right. tour, so we we'd get something for it if it did work out, and we didn't get anything. We yeah. couldn't even use a sticker of Jason Newstead now in Metallica. We couldn't even do that. Yeah, yeah. we Cliff just went mm, and everything just you know, he just crunched everything. With but uh, Bernstein. Yeah, 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 yeah. I respect him enormously. But, but anyways, what, what happened was, you know, I told Brian, and I said, you know, we talked about Jason. He goes, oh, yeah, well, he's good, like that, you know. And then, then we went to the Flotsam shows, and then uh, they played the Flotsam show, and it was like a wake. Yeah. It was like a wake. I mean, and they were supposed to be all happy, and they had to play two shows, two nights, and they'd driven all the way out there with their equipment. And they played great, and they did their thing, but they, were, like, they weren't looking at each yeah, other, yeah. no yeah. eye contact, and went up and down, and it was just like, it was like everybody got their girlfriend stolen. It was just really, oh. what happened was, you know, Jason did get, a, get an audition. He went up there, and Brian got more involved and was talking to people. I know Lafitte was involved because he put the show together after it happened. Well, actually, after the Flotsam shows, he takes his phone off the hook, locks himself in his bedroom, and does nothing but learn every song all the way through Ride the Lightning. And that's learned everything. You can play it all flawlessly. And then he goes up there, auditions, and I heard he got narrowed down to three or four people, and I knew who all of them were. And he, then they flew him back again, and then he told me that they were going to take him out to dinner, and I go, that, you got the gig. And he goes, how do you know? I, go, I just, I can feel it. Mm. I just can tell. And so I said, uh, um, they're going to get you really drunk, and they're going to ask you to join the band. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Mm. And so he called me the next day, hung over as shit, and said, how much money should I ask for? <laughs> and I gave him a number, and he goes, well, I was thinking about this, and I go, yeah, they could afford that too. It was a lot more than what I said. Afford that too. It was a lot more than what I said. And then you know he, you know he gets the gig, and and you know I kept in touch with him. We talked and we did stuff, and he would call me and tell me things that was going on, and 
then I got kind of told that if I wanted to talk to Jason, I had to go through management and make it a formal request because I was a journalist and all this and all that. And I and I lost I lost touch with him. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, but anyways, what happened was, you know, Brian kind of slid in there and, and did his thing. And and I read that, you know, Brian got him in the band. And Brian knew Lars better than me. I'm the guy that brought it up. Mm. Okay, and nobody gets credit for that. You know, Jason got in there because he's as good as he is. Yeah. And if he wasn't that good, nothing would have happened. Of course, I think it was soon after that I went up to Lars's. Oh, the garage. His first house that he had up in East Bay, Oakland. Right. So I drove up there to visit, and I don't know, I just went up, but I helped James and Jason build the garage for Garage Days, you know. Oh, really? Did you soundproof it? Soundproofed yeah. it. Yeah. And I remember okay. Jason was was a construction guy. He had a tool belt and all this <laughs> shit. I mean, he was up there, and so we're eggshelling and mattresses, and it was, it was James. Lars wouldn't bother. He was in the other house, but I was the three of us in there soundproof in the garage so the, for them to rehearse. and, and I no think kidding. Yeah. Wow. And, and, of course, you know, back then it was just, I didn't have a camera. I didn't even think about taking pictures. I wish I had. Right. It would have been cool, you know, with them on tool belts and hammers and stuff. Oh, yeah. But it's just like, you know. <laughs> and I remember going out to Lars, with Lars to the Stone or somewhere one night to a concert to see somebody. And we came out and somebody spray painted his, his first car. He had a Honda Civic or something. Or Honda Accord. It was a maroon. Yeah. Actually, I got a picture of Yeah, Somebody spray painted his car or something, you know, with a the <laughs> yellow paint and shit. But I yeah, remember sure. going up there for that. It's like 86 or 87. I don't remember. It would have been 87. I think. I think he when he killed in the 80s, late 86s. 86. Yeah, 87, yeah. baby. Yeah. It was winter 86. Yeah, and also then I remember being up there because I remember one day with Lars, we drove all the way to Sacramento to go see Deep Purple oh, really? at an outdoor festival. And I had to drive, and Lars was screaming, Go faster, go faster, go faster. <laughs> I'm doing 90 in his Honda and blasting the music. I'm thinking I'm going to get a ticket, you know. And it's just, and it's, you know, with Lars, you're like a vampire. You're up until 5 in the morning, and then you sleep. And right. it was just, you know, so for a week I was you know, a vampire with Metallica, but I do remember soundproof in his garage, and that was pretty cool. That's the first That's time I met cool. Jason. He's a good, he's, I, he's a really great. good, really good guy, hard working guy, I had a lot of fun with him. But he challenged me more than any guy I ever worked with from a band. What do we got today? I, it's like I, I had to- I remember meeting him when he was in a band called The Dogs. Armored, I went out with Armored Saint when they first put out their EP. I think they had just got announced that they signed with- Was Chris this in Wars. Phoenix? This is in Phoenix, yeah. and it was basically Flotsam and Jetsam, but they used to be called The Dogs. Yeah. And they opened up, and he was the biggest fan of Joey Vera. He's like, you know, oh, he's yeah. the he, professor. He, yeah, oh yeah, he's the call. And I remember professor. saying, you and uh, Cliff Burton are the greatest bass players in music.